the... Welcome everyone to Vlogmas in July. That's right, a video every day for 31 days, presented by Nomad Internet. Typically, Vlogmas is done in December, where vloggers on YouTube upload a video every day for 25 days leading up till Christmas morning. I borrowed this idea from the Bethunes over at Red, White, and Bethune. They passed the torch to me this year. As a Christmas fanatic, this is a great way for me to be cheerful and thankful all month long. Opie, you better be a good boy this July. Santa Paws is watching. Tara, no more sneaking into catnip sack. Santa Paws will bring you coal. Thanks for joining me this month, guys, and have a jolly old month of July. Yep, good morning, everyone. Day three of Vlogmas in July, a video every single day. This video kicks off uh, just eight hours after my last one ended with the uh, nasty storm out here. Hard to believe this is the same place, but uh, all the water is gone. Tater tot looks dry out there. It's cloudy, gonna warm up. And we're gonna get on the road and head towards Wyoming today, right after I go take a nice, hot, long shower. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll be uploading this video with some Nomad Internet. Link below in the video description. Let's get this day going. They are forecasting some high winds today. That doesn't bother me as much as it would if I were in my RV traveling, but something to consider because this car is very lightweight car. Uh, a little bit of wind can, can really move the car around. So it, it's already whipping around quite a bit. Just gonna, just gonna have to be careful. And uh, they sometimes have coffee there, but for some reason, they were out of coffee to today, so we do need to go hit up a coffee shop here somewhere before we get on back on I-80 and head west today. This fancy uh, Crown Plaza Hotel next door had a, had a Starbucks built into the lobby. They didn't have a drive through so I had to go in there and wait. And I looked at the line for people waiting for coffee, and it was like Disney-esque. You know, there was like 40 people waiting for their drinks that they had already purchased. I always just go in there and get a Pike Place drip coffee. And as you're putting your card in there, they're filling it up to hand it to you right there at the cash register so you can just leave and skip. So it's kind of a bonus to not being one of those fancy soy joy moy koi lottie frotty fruity drink. You just get a normal coffee and then you get to get back on the road. Yay! <laughs> but it is one hot, delicious beverage that I'm gonna have to wait to cool off for a little bit. We'll get on I-80 in the meantime. I am a lot happier that I'm not driving a big, huge RV through these winds. Otherwise, uh, that would be stressing me out. But even the car is getting whipped around because it's so light. Just a different kind of thing. We're gonna stop in here and go through the historical town of Gothenburg. Probably top off our gas while we took this exit anyway. It's about 4.53 a gallon, which is some of the cheapest, and I say cheapest loosely, uh, cheapest in the country right now. Um, it's just the norm for me to pay upwards of five or six dollars a gallon everywhere. So uh, Nebraska is, is sitting pretty at one of the least expensive places to get gasoline these days. So at least that's nice. I did get a regional alert on my phone for this area and parts of Wyoming that we're headed to today. Um, a high wind advisory and uh, the high clearance vehicles like trucks and stuff need to, this is this is the kind of wind that tips over semi trucks and I know you've probably seen it on on the news and stuff um, it's it's no joke so you just you got to be careful when you're going around a semi truck you got to be careful when they're passing you because their trailers flipping all around no rush today we're just taking it easy Aw, tater tot. Of course, most people have probably heard of the Pony Express, at least somewhere. Uh, what it was, was a combination of a uh, horse and rider uh, mail courier system. So it was the UPS of uh, the 1800s. And uh, it ran from, I believe, St. Joseph, Missouri, all the way to Sacramento, Cal California. They would ride sometimes up to 80 miles on horseback. And then they would come to something like this, a Pony Express transfer station. This is an original preserved here in Gothenburg. Uh, this is where the rider and horse would take a break. They would hand off their, their mail and uh, somebody else would take it and uh, move it on down the line. So 
they made a little park here in remembrance uh, of this station. It's pretty cool. Little sign here in, in Nebraska also talks about the fact that Gothenburg officially became an incorporated town because of the fact that it had this transfer station here for Pony Express. On the outside here, here's an old plaque. Original Pony Express Station 1854, folks. Yeah. It looks like the door's open. Let's go in here and uh, take a peek around. So there's a saddlebag here. You can see the, the locks on it so they could lock up the mail. <laughs> and then uh, got an office worker here keeping, keeping track of all the comings and goings. Really old stove there. I love that color. That is really cool. Look at the ceiling. Wow. Oh, here's some of their weapons. Navy Colt Model 1851. 1849, the Cogswell, 1850, and a little pocket pistol. Very cool. See, because I made a stop here many, many years ago in the winter, and this place was all closed up and locked up, but when the sun's out, they're open. You can go in there. She is really knowledgeable in there. I got another trip magnet. It's the Pony Express magnet that kind of looks like one of the old stamps that you would put on a piece of mail from the 1850s. Really, really cool magnet. And there was also a wall with a bunch of pictures from some of the other, I think there's like eight stations that kind of semi exist, but this building right here is actually the top floor of what was, what was a two-story building. And underneath it was hollow and open where they had fur trading and the horses would come in like, like inside from the sun for a little break or from the rain maybe and stuff like that. And this one was, was moved to this location. This is one of the best preserved uh, Pony Express stations left here on the Pony Express. I'm just so thankful there's sunshine, even though it's a little windy today. But we do need to get back on the road and head towards Wyoming. Tater Tot is up for the job. Up for whatever, whatever weather conditions we find. Tater Tot is not the most comfortable ride. Uh, I definitely miss the nice comfy chair of Frida in the Class A, so I, I gotta stop at least ahead, uh, every 100 miles stretch get get blood flowing back to my butt like literally my butt keeps going numb i'm like trying to stand up while driving and punch myself in the butt to, to wake it up <laughs> ah this stretch of i-80 is so interesting it's not like other interstates where it'll say like 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 even though you know you're gonna go 500 miles on i-5 every 15 miles it says keep left in 16 miles towards i-5 you know, like this stretch literally just says 588 miles until my destination tonight. <laughs> so it's, it's like, okay, like literally nothing. Next, next services, 22 miles. <laughs> like there's no exits for 22 miles. It's just, just farmland out here. I'm going over to check out this uh, plaque over there. I want to see what it says. Because I mean, I haven't even closed my move rings on my Apple Watch since I flew down. Not one day have I closed one of my uh, move rings. So I need to be a little bit more active. All right, got the great seal of Nebraska here talking about Cheyenne County. Cheyenne County in Nebraska, not Cheyenne, Cheyenne Wyoming just yet. Here in the uh, panhandle of Nebraska, the Nebraska Plains. The wind has died down a little bit at least. Um, I got tater tot up to at least 75 mile an hour, which is the posted speed limit here until we get into Wyoming. People look at these cars and they all, first of all, they always think they're electric. No, it's a three cylinder, one liter gas engine that gets 43 miles per gallon. And two, they say, how fast does that thing go? Is it allowed on the freeway? It goes 90 miles an hour. Yes, it goes, it's just a little, sketchy when you're going that fast all right i'm stretched let's get over into wyoming all righty we just passed the last exit on i-80 in nebraska which means we should be seeing a sign here pretty soon i don't know if there'll be a place to pull off but there's nobody behind me so i can slow down and take a peek and actually yeah i'm gonna pull over right here over these rumble strips Heck yeah, Tater Tot's doing great. Check out this sign, welcome to Wyoming. You know why this sign's up so high? Because there can be a lot of snow build up around here. So 
And I'm gonna get gas here in Wyoming. It's about the same price as Nebraska anyway. Instead of doing what we did yesterday and checking into the hotel and then trying to find Uber or DoorDash and be unsuccessful, I'm gonna stop in a couple of these towns here in Wyoming and try to find a restaurant, a sit down restaurant to eat at. I know it's gonna cut into 45 minutes of my com commute and we're gonna get to the motel. Hopefully it's a better one today, a little later than I wanted to, but I just want to sit down and eat and take a, take a break from the road. So we'll hit up Cheyenne first. All right, now, I don't know what the food's going to be like, but this is really catchy. We're going to turn here, and you're going to see what this place is called. It's called Poor Decisions. Poor and P-O-U-R, like poor, poor beer, but Poor Decisions. They have a kitchen. They got food. Let's check it out. I love it. Poor Decisions. We'll take a peek at their menu here in just a minute, but... It's a pretty cool place. I can definitely smell. They got some local beer on draft. That's the Wyoming logo cowboy there. I went uh, with the Black Tooth Saddle Bronc. Black Tooth Saddle Bronc. It's a, a dark, dark beer. It's got that Wyoming kick. A little bit of like almost coffee aftertaste. I do have a food order in. They do have burgers. Here's a live view of uh, inside the RV there. You got Opie by my finger there sitting on the recliner chair where I sit. And Tara is actually up in the window there. She's pulled the shades back and she's laying in the sunshine. Might make it a little warmer in there. So I'm gonna ask Jada to maybe go in there and pull the blind back. She obviously likes it though. They're gonna have dinner here in about two hours local time there. I miss my kitties. <laughs> There we go, went with the plain bacon cheeseburger and some taters. I don't know why they always drape the bacon off the side. I'm just gonna fold it right back into the burger, you know, like every time. All right, here we go. Oh, jeez. Ground crew, I'm throwing it on the ground. Oh my gosh, I finished it all, but barely. I'm gonna go ahead and vote that. Best burger of 2022, but we're not done. There's an extra special surprise after your meal coming right now. You get a scoop of ice cream to finish it off. A free scoop of ice cream, so I went with the uh, strawberry here. Mm. Yeah, this is a surprisingly good stop. I'm glad I stopped here. But if we keep eating burgers that good, I'm gonna have to bring back the throw it on the ground. It's gonna have to come back. I'm sorry, I have to. All right, back on the road. Uh, I'll finish up my little driving through Wyoming here and uh, show you when we get to our accommodations for the evening. I'm gonna be passing this uh, fifth wheel in front of us, this Momentum. It's got a bunch of straps on it and oh my gosh, this thing is destroyed, guys. Look at the truck straps on it. The whole middle of the RV is, there's a freaking car in it. What in the, I don't think that's an approved toy hauler, guys. <sighs> Things you see on the highway. All right, well, it's 8 p.m. mountain time now. That means we actually gained an hour traveling west. So it's an hour earlier. 8, 8 p.m. and uh, uh, so we did Motel 6 last night. We are upgrading big time to Super 8. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's an up. It doesn't look like an upgrade on the outside, just pulling in here. But I did confirm that I have all those amenities that I like, like, like a mini fridge and a coffee maker and a microwave and stuff. But, right. And actually, guys, this is... This is the motel. There's the office. That little door right there is the office. That's it. I don't know. All right, I'll, uh, I will, I'll show you the hallway later. There's people out there and uh, I don't want to, I don't want to film when there's a bunch of people out there. Okay. So this is my uh, beautiful room, a little smaller than the motel six. This is the first thing that's creeping me out a little bit. Why is that moving? <laughs> See it? Is there a fan? No, the air conditioner's not even on. <laughs> I don't know why that's moving. But okay, yeah, pretty pretty basic still. Pretty basic, not as nice or clean as where I was at last night, but look at this. We got microwave. We got our own little mini fridge. It's on, ice cold, and I don't have to go down to the lobby and drink cold coffee. I've got, got my own coffee. 
Oh my gosh, I'm excited. What kind of beautiful Wyoming mountainous backdrop do we have? What the? We have a, we have a wall? We have a wall with a ladder and a really dirty window. Is this window? Yeah, it's locked. Literally looks like a homeless encampment right up there. Um, well, yeah, yeah, okay. Paid 62 bucks last night at Motel 6. Paid $79 tonight for this Super 8 with luxurious stuff inside. <laughs> I don't know if I'm actually gonna take a shower. If you look in this tub here, there's still for some reason curly black pubes. They didn't even clean it from the lap. That is literally disgusting. Pubic hair. No, I actually decided I am not going to take a shower here tonight. I'm going to skip skip a day and I'll shower tomorrow night wherever we uh, land. You can't, you can't have pubic hair sitting in a room that's been cleaned, ready for someone new. <laughs> I, anyways, guys, I'm tired and, and I'm not too happy about this one. So I do have a couple more beers in the fridge. I'm going to edit and get some stuff done and cut this video off for now, okay? You guys be well. We'll get back on the road and get into the Pacific Northwest tomorrow. Uh, I understand you're probably watching this on the, on the 3rd, so don't worry. I, if you have plans for the 4th of July, so do I. But I am a day at least behind right now, and I'll continue to upload daily. But I do have plans myself for 4th of July, which you'll see my activities when I get back uh, either on the 5th or 6th following. So I hope you guys are excited about the 4th of July tomorrow. Okay, guys? And I will see you tomorrow with another video.